I played 100 Days of Sunhaven and here's what happened. Hello my friends and welcome back to a brand new 100 Days video. Today we are playing Sunhaven and I am so excited for this game. Sunhaven is a gorgeous fantasy farming sim with pixel art, a large cast of characters, and not just one, but three fully fleshed out worlds to explore. I'm your host Sapphire and today we are diving into a fresh playthrough to enter the magical world of Sunhaven to meet new friends, take care of fantasy creatures, and perhaps even fall in love. And so without further ado, here's my first year in Sunhaven, and here's what happened. And like all of the games I play, we first had to do our character customization, which usually is a tough decision for me, but Sunhaven took it to the extreme. In addition to choosing all of our character attributes, we are also tasked with picking one of seven different fantasy races. The human, elf, Demon, Angel, Amari, Elemental, or the Naga. And after literally 20 minutes, I settled on the Elf and also picked the Rancher Profession. But enough customizing, let's board the train to Sunhaven. It was here we met our very first Sunhaven NPC, Lynn, and I barely knew her, but I knew I wanted to marry her. Anyways, we invited her to sit with us and chatted a bit about the adventure about to unfold when the power was cut due to a mysterious fog that swept over the entire train station. But that was a problem for another time, because more importantly, we arrived to our new farm in Sunhaven and chose a spot for our house. I eventually settled here next to this snackoon before somebody named Anne rudely barged in and demanded money in exchange for some rusty tools. Uh, Alright, I guess it'd have to do for now. Anyways, I got to work clearing the farm, planted some wheat seeds, leveled up in farming, did some crafting, and then discovered you can change the day speed, which I think is a feature that every game should have personally. And as future Safi here editing this video, I use this feature constantly. I toggled it when I wanted to go faster, slower. This feature was such a game changer. Anyways, with the remaining daylight, I explored town, bought more seeds, and then passed out. Very dramatically, I woke up in the hospital the very next day. I then picked out some skills to unlock with the skill tree before more exploring. It was here I met the most adorable baby dragon, gave Lynn an apple, and then talked to Lucia about said baby dragon problem. She advised to visit the beach to learn the basics of fishing and catch a fish to lure the dragon. After that, I did more exploring and learned about seasonal tokens. So these tokens are an exclusive Sunhaven currency where you can exchange them for prizes. And these prizes I desperately needed. Oh. Oh wait, I have tokens. <gasps> Bumblebee whistle. <gasps> wait, what the heck is this? Oh my goodness. Wait, no, this is actually so cute. This is so cute. Yeah, this would be a problem for us later. And by problem, I mean just buying everything. Okay, I had to go find a million tokens immediately. On day three, Anne gave us a new crafting table to make furniture items, and then tackled the baby dragon problem, which meant literally stopping Solon from assaulting this cutie pie. Solon, you can't just bop the baby dragon. <laughs> It's okay though, this story has a happy ending and we convinced Solon to adopt the dragon baby. On day four, I watered my crops, chopped trees, finished a quest for June, and explored west of our farm, also meeting our very first enemies. Uh oh. Oh boy. Okay. Okay. Um. Uh. <laughs> I'm gonna go. On day five, our simple farm was suddenly overrun with weeds by a fellow named Weedle. No, not that kind. This thing. And in a strange turn of events, Weedle challenged me to a jump rope contest. And if I lose, he will wreck his weedy havoc all over Sunhaven. I of course felt compelled to defend my new home, so jump rope I played. No, I already lost? That's so embarrassing. Okay. No! Oh no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh no! That's so hard. That's so tough. <laughs> no! Oh my god, there's so many weeds. <laughs> 
Yeah, we'll return to this later. But on the brighter side, I had my first crop harvest today, and then met up with Lucia to embark on the dragon meat, a sort of rite of passage for new Sunhaven residents. It was here I met the sun dragon Elios and received his blessing. I then attempted to defeat the Great Weedle, and then didn't even record my attempt where I actually beat him. I... I'm so sorry, you guys. You managed to keep up with me? And you want to know what's even worse? I think I actually had... had a good time! As in to say I had fun! You jumped in with such passion, such grace, such style. And as a reward for winning, we received our very first Sunhaven pet named Weedy. This also marked my addiction to pets in this game, but more on that later. On day six, I planted up more seeds before heading to the mines for the very first time. And you guys, these mines are so freaking cool and unique. I just love like the atmosphere and design of them and it's just a really cool experience. I also appreciate how in this game to actually unlock the next floor, you have to craft a permanent key to unlock it. So yeah, just a really cool mechanic. On day seven, I crafted a furnace, harvested crops, smelted some copper ore, and then purchased my very first Sunhaven project, repairing this little doghouse. On day 8, I was compelled to visit Peter at the beach. So to the beach we go. It was here this super extravagant ship was docked at the Sunhaven port. And here we met Lord Shang. I mean, ah, <sighs> Lord Shang. Um, um, and anyway, we also met some adorable crab monsters like there's an inner tube on his head. Are you kidding me? Since I had the money, I decided to immediately blow it all on the seeds on day 9. I also did some combat practice and chose the crossbow, flirted with Lin, gave her an orange, and did more mining. On day 10, the doghouse was restored. I also decided to finally try fishing, and somehow, on my very first try, I actually managed to do it. Whoa, what? Oh! Is that it? Did I do it? Oh, I did it. Uh, yeah, you and me are both shocked. But also, I love this fishing minigame. It's fast, it's easy, you catch the fish in seconds, it's just a great time. And also, this game has a gigantic encyclopedia that I want to fill immediately. Also today, I gave Lynn an orange, and it also happened to be her birthday. So I guess it's the thought that counts, right? With more money in the bank on day 11, I visited Town Hall to buy my first barn permit. We also met some new villagers who are also literally angels. Very, very cool. On day 12, I built my first barn and then made a stop for kitties to buy exactly one cow and no food. We also ran into Lynn today and I think planned a date, maybe? I'm not sure, honestly. Okay, just kidding, the date went amazing because the following day, Lynn gave me a record which I don't know about you guys, but this is getting a little serious now. Chaos reigned on day 15 meanwhile with a new elemental monster, this time a rock crab named Krusty. He'd have to wait a bit because we had more pressing matters to attend to. The sun dragon Elios once requested our presence and asked us to find this crystal called Glory in the eastern wilderness. In the process, we fought off some very evil miners who were trying to use the crystal for their own evil purposes sent this guy packing, I think to jail, and gave Elios the Glorite Crystal. On day 16, I did some quests for Liam and Solon, and then gave Lynn a new pickaxe to deal with Krusty. Talk about total wife material, am I right? And like, I, I guess Nathaniel also helped too, but like, who really cares about that? Lynn, star of the show. On day 17, I did a ton more fishing before our second date with Lynn, and not to brag, but it went perfectly. With some extra money in the bank, on day 18, I checked out the pet shop for the very first time. And you guys, this was a mistake. Look, I knew this game had really cool unique critters, and I just wanted an entire farm full of them now. Except the pets are crazy expensive, and I do not have the funds for that. So we'll come back to this later. I also did more fishing today, and shout out to the game for the Always Sunny reference. Can I offer you a nice egg in this trying time? This game, an immediate 20 out of 10 for me, folks. The following day, we met Elios again who gave us a new quest. It's our duty to confront and defeat the moon dragon Dynas, 
who threatens to cast an eternal darkness over Sunhaven. But no pressure, right? Also, remember Krusty, who was that nuisance on our farm? Yeah, he just up and left. <laughs> okay, good riddance anyway. Anyways, I finally bought my very first pet today, a Pegasus named Zippy. <gasps> oh, I'm buying that. Oh, I'm buying that immediately. <laughs> Zippy! <laughs> and after attaching a leash, we brought Zippy to the mines. Not sure if this is safe, but he seems to like it. And thanks to some copper keys that I made, we also reached the very first treasure room. On day 21, I bought another cow and did more questing for villagers. The following day, I placed down my new shed, organized machines, and then did more mining. Day 23, meanwhile, was huge. Today, I finally harvested enough crops, earning me just enough leaf tokens for my newest pet, my own little guy named Bloom. I was sad I didn't have enough tokens for the bee flute, but it was literally 1,000 tokens, so perhaps next year. I also finally gave the snack queen on my farm the 10 apples and wheat that he craved, unblocking the path and awarding me this adorable plushie. I then finished up quests for Kitty, Pinto, Wernhardt, and Catherine. I then made a ton of money overnight, so I did what I do best. I bought another pet, this time a Griffith named Griffin. I also added a coop to my farm before heading to the mines a day later on day 26, with a quick stop to the pet store again. Oh, oh, oh for fuck's <laughs> sake, are you kidding me? Prince Frog! Oh my god, buy him. He, but buy like, him. what about the sharks? Nope, nope, nope. Day 27 was just the usual business, but on the last day of spring we had a new festival to explore. Today was the Lantern Festival. This was such a beautifully atmospheric festival to usher in the new season of summer. I also bought a ton of stuff today, including, yeah, you guessed it, a brand new pet. But look at this little guy, a lantern dragon spirit. Uh, I, of course I had to get this, you guys. 3,000, I have enough money, buying it. Anyways, after that, it was time to watch the festival. Afterwards, I passed out decorating when this happened. Um. Oh, I passed out. <laughs> no! Okay. Well, starting summer in style. <gasps> what's, what's this? Helpful ghost? Oh my God, is this, a, is this a rare event? Is this rare? I couldn't find too much about this helpful ghost. But like Stardew Valley, it seems in Sunhaven, you too can have a chance for a random event during the night. Anyways, it is time for the first of summer now. Today, I pretty much bought one of each summer crop to grow, and then checked out the summer specials. Oh, <laughs> oh there's no way! Shortcake. Oh, look at that. That's a whale. That's a little whale named Shortcake. Oh. You're gonna go broke. He's right, I went broke. Anyways, on day 30, I did more story questing. I had crafted a pair of reading gloves to have this text translated, which turned out to be elvish, which in my opinion is a slight oversight considering that my character is an elf herself. And with all leads turning up dead, Amanda the Librarian suggested we find an artifact known as the Stone of Tongues, which of course Anne owns but she also seems to have lost it, and now it's up to us to find it. The following day, I took Zippy out and began our search for the lost treasure. I then died, and overnight got the weirdest event. Yeah, that's right, we had a time traveler come to our farm. And as a gift, they brought me a super galaxy smoothie. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Anyways, on day 32, I finished off the treasure quest for Anne and received the Stone of Tongues. I then bought more farm animals the following day before heading to the library to finish off the ancient text quest, yada yada yada. I then somehow got roped into growing 40 grapes. I don't know why, I won't ask. I then got yet another time traveler. Okay. <laughs> I have no idea how rare this is, so if you guys know, I would love to hear the stats on this. The following day, I did more mining, except another snack blocked the path. Only four iron? Okay, easy enough. 
And as a reward, I received another plush for the collection. On day 35, I decided to use some community tokens and bought potions to increase health and mana. I also got a love letter to finally ask Lynn to be my girlfriend, and she said yes, hehe. <laughs> On day 36, the elvish grapes did not grow, and it's because we had to infuse them with not just water, but mana too. It was here though I took a quick break from story questing to do some more mining and focus on other projects. The following day was again mining, before doing some serious decorating on day 38. Allow with me here to share with you the wonderful world of Shed Cosmetics. In this game, you can customize your Shed to one of the wonderful cosmetic options. Like, I'm talking about a lot of options. Jelly jar? You got it. Ice cream parlor? Why not? A mushroom house? Uh, yeah, I sure hope it does. For our first shed though, I chose the adorable bookstore design. The following day was a pretty chill farm day, and I was just loving my farm so far. It just looks so pretty. After harvesting crops on day 40, I decided to tackle a quest called Dangers of the North and finally explore Northern Sunhaven. We found some suspicious characters, and then a snackoon blocking the path. But it seemed like some wheat and potatoes would satisfy this guy's cravings, so I bought more seeds, and then did more mining. On day 41, I crafted a compost station, gave apples to Rosa, and then found the most expensive pet in Sunhaven. Like, wow. Day 42 is our first big summer festival, this music festival, which was super, super cool. The festival sold a bunch of really cool instruments and themed snacks, but the main draw was watching a bunch of routines. Up first was Kitty doing this really cute K-pop routine, followed by Claude playing his violin. And overall, this was just a really cute festival. Day 43, however, got a little chaotic. We woke up to a literal squid monster wreaking havoc on our farm. So I visited Peter to see what we could do about it. And a bit morbid, but Peter explained we could catch bombfish and basically bomb the squid. Which seemed a little rude, but I mean, okay. <laughs> this is violent. Oh, oh, the poor little guy. If I don't get a little squid pet, I want a refund. Oh, <gasps> little squid pet. Ah, Hermie, let's go. On day 44, I bought pineapple and mango seeds to grow for the snackoon, and then, for the literal first time in my playthrough, visited the museum. Yes, I know I'm late. In the process, I met this very dapper gentleman named Covington, and also joined the Sunhaven Museum Society. In total, there are 40 specimens in the geology wing, 130 artifacts in the culture wing, and 109 fish in the aquarium wing. And like in a lot of other cozy farming games, it is our job to fully finish off the entire museum. Although, can I be candid with you guys for a minute here because there is one big problem with the Sunhaven Museum that I did not like. In other games, let's say Animal Crossing for instance, you visit Blathers and give him donations. The game then automatically sorts those artifacts into their own slots. But in this game, you have to find the exact slot where the artifact goes and put it in yourself. And for those who might be new to the game, that's kind of hard. On the first few trips, I just spent the entire time walking around just trying to find where the artifact goes. There's also no catalog category where you can track your artifacts you've already donated, so it's a little unhelpful. One angel in the Sunhaven community, however, made a Google spreadsheet to track museum donations. And yes, I have been using this the entire playthrough. It is so helpful. The following day, I brought in more stuff to the museum and then bought a bunch more seeds to work on other bundles. On day 46, I brought the wheat and potatoes for the snackoon blocking the north path and got a plushie as a reward. We made our way through a gorgeous forest, defeated some monsters, but along the way, the fog got way too dense, so I had to backtrack to ask for help from Elios. And apparently, Claude was the only person who could help. Yes, that's right, the literal one person I have never talked to in this game so far. The following day, I bought furniture, planted some more wheat, and then sought help from Claude. But he ended up being zero help. Thanks, Claude. Back on the story track with the mana grapes, 
I learned from Lucia about what it takes to actually infuse mana in crops, so let's try that again. And yeah, that seemed to work, because on day 49, my elvish grapes were ready. And lucky me, this was all for nothing. Okay, just kidding. But basically, Edwin said that since I can infuse mana into crops, I should be able to find the lost elvish city of Nilvari. I guess I truly have the heart of the cards, or whatever. I also bought this little mimic, because of course I had to, duh. And then did more fishing. Ah! Oh no! Please! Oh, do you want to try, try catching this fish for me? Look how fast this is! Oh, there's just a click? It can be in the orange or the green. Are you joking me? I told you, I come up and I win. At day 50 and halfway through our playthrough, I brought Mimi along for our adventure to find Nilvari. We crossed over a magical bridge into the elven forest full of berry cherries and sugar plums. We also fought some new monsters, avoided others, oh. and caught new fish including a dragon gulper, a horsefish, a leaf soul, and a barkfish. It was here I also infused this group with mana to enter Nilvari, this beautifully atmospheric and quite honestly very cottagecore looking elvish town. We also met Gorwin, the elder elf in town, and as a welcoming gift, he literally gave me another farm. Like, an entire farm, you guys. But if I was being honest, I feel like I already planted pretty permanent roots in my Sunhaven town and worked really hard to build up my original farm, so I kind of doubted I would use this land a lot aside from gathering resources. And also because I needed to know if elvish animals can live on the Sunhaven farm. Buying one of you? Buying one of you? Buying one of you? I literally booked it home to see for myself. And in case you wanted to know, you can. This game? 10 out of 10. No. 100 out of 10 for me, folks. With all of the new content, I was feeling a bit overwhelmed. So on day 51, I did some simple farming today. I also brought in an entire chest worth of museum artifacts, which felt pretty rewarding. And rewards I did get, I earned a lot of loot for these donations. With lots of animals and pets everywhere, and yes, I know I did this to myself, I tried organizing with some fences. I decided to keep the chickens and baby phoenix free near the coop, and then built a large fenced-in enclosure for the barn dwellers. Also, uh, when I said earlier that I was overwhelmed by all of the pets and animals, so about that. Yeah. I did some more mining the following day, and also unlocked the second treasure room to reveal this ore muncher. He required a plethora of materials including 300 stone, 30 copper, 10 iron, and 2 rubies to pass. I upgraded my house on day 54, and on day 55 harvested a bunch of crops to finally feed our next snackoon. And on the last day of summer, I attended the end of season barbecue at the beach, which was so wholesome. I bought some decor pieces for the house before the main event started, the hot dog eating contest. Yes, that's right folks, even in a fantasy farm setting, there are hot dog eating contests. And I am so here for it. Okay, just press E as hard and fast as you can. <laughs> oh, I am the queen of button pressing, okay. <gasps> Queen of button pressing! Queen of button pressing! Oh. <sighs> Why am I out of breath? <laughs> 114! <laughs> and with that, a beautiful display of fireworks rang in the end of the season and set us into fall. As always, I bought a bunch of seeds today, and then checked out the fall token offerings featuring Russell. After that, I did some more fishing to catch some new fish including the autumn leaf sole, which I then proceeded to eat by accident. Wait, no, I don't want to eat- no! No! I also caught a koi fish, a vampire piranha, and a fish called the tricker trout, which I did not eat. The following day, I returned to Nilvari to work on more story quests, and on day 59, headed north to meet Gorun at the Grand Tree. 
but thanks to some bully named Wesley, I was not allowed to use the wind lift to meet Gorwin, which meant completing a meticulous and tedious platforming section of the game. Anyways, long story short, I met up with the world dragon Nivara, who unlocked her lessons to teach to me. Very cool. On day 60, I returned mining, and on day 61, fed the ore muncher. After exploring for a bit, I did more fishing and caught a chromafin, a ghost fish, and a pirate perch. I again did more fishing the following day, and caught a hayfish, a pumpkin jelly, turkey fish, blunted swordfish, and this one called a cotocopia. For the record though, I am loving all of these unique Sunhaven fish. And also today, I fully finished off the Forager Museum bundle. On day 63, I unlocked a new spell that automatically tills soil, which was super epic. I then planted some more seeds and went mining again to collect more adamant ore. And just for full transparency, lately I've been playing Sunhaven on the 40 minute day speed, and I have just been loving that so much more. I really encourage anybody else who plays Sunhaven to make sure to toggle the day speed to your liking. It helps so much. Anyways, after some mining, I did more fishing to try to finish the fall fish bundle. I finally reclaimed my autumn leaf soul, and then caught the king salmon to finish off the fall fish bundle, awarding me my own aquarium. Day 64, meanwhile, was a pretty chill exploration day, where we came across the slime king. And, uh, yeah, I died. On day 65, I crafted the most adorable bed, and then did more mining. And on day 66, returned to Novari for my first lesson with Navara. With the first lesson being tasked to infuse each mana conduit. But while doing so, I got a little distracted. <laughs> You're coming home with me. My second lesson was the following day, all focusing on commonality. AKA trying to make peace with Wesley in town who absolutely hated my guts. And the best way to do this is to donate 1,000 orbs in town. So let's get grinding, I suppose. On day 68, I brought in more fishing crops to the museum and then caught a snobfish for the collection. On day 69, I delivered carrots to Catherine today and then fed this vampire snackoon garlic. This unlocked access to Wernhardt's house, which I'm sure he appreciated. On day 70, meanwhile, I worked again on the main storyline quest trying to befriend Claude. With my tomato bread bribe slash gift, this seemed to do the trick. We discussed the mysterious fog surrounding Withergate, and would have to talk to Catherine about removing it. With an adamant key in hand, I headed to the Nilvari Mines for the very first time, which was by far the coolest thing ever, like, oh my gosh, the atmosphere? Peak. This is absolutely peak, you guys. While here, I also harvested some really interesting things including mana shards and dragon scales. Day 72 was more mining, and day 73 was more exploration, but specifically the eastern forest. It was here that I died, and then fed another snackoon. This time, pepper flakes and bananas, which is an odd combination, but I'll accept it. The following day, meanwhile, was very exciting. Most importantly, I had enough fall tokens to redeem the autumn pet, Russell. I then brought in the rest of the mana orbs to Nilvari to work on the next part of this questline, which was to copy a poem for Wesley, finishing off Nuvara's second lesson. On day 75, meanwhile, I welcomed two new farm animals to our family, a baby griffin and a baby stump. And after that, I brought a bunch more stuff to the museum. And the following day, I began my final lesson with Nivara to grow this mana gem seed. I also added a silk moth to the animal family, and did more fishing to finish off the Nilvari fish bundle. On day 77, I met Nivara to finish the final task, and with the help of Wesley, grew the mana gem seed to its fullest potential. And with that, received the world dragon's blessing. On day 78, meanwhile, I took a break from story stuff to work on upgrading my house again, which required 50 hardwood planks and 200 heavy stone. I also bought more home decor. And the following day, I blew all my money on a tier 3 house permit. On day 80, meanwhile, I received a very special visit from Ronald who asked me to come by the tavern today. Gee, I wonder what this could be about. Oh, this is so cute! Oh, look at this clown! 
Oh my god, I love this so much! Aww! This was so cute! Wow. Animal Crossing who? For real. I then upgraded my house and it looked so cool! And I was loving it so much, I then pretty much went into decorating mode the entire day. I then repaired a couple of general store sections and again did more decorating. On day 83, I did more mining in the Nilvari Mines and also finished the Mines Bundle off. I also unlocked the next set of floors in the regular mines with this really cool ice section with freeze beads. And lastly, I made a tea kettle which I found out actually made tea. Super cool stuff. And on the last day of fall, I finished off the flower bundle, gave Luna Blue Rose Bouquet, finished Quest for Kitty and Amanda, and then headed to the Halloween Festival, which happened to be the cutest event. I got some candy, admired the cute decor, and then approached this mysterious tent. Oh! <gasps> and yes, my little subscribers, I blew all of my money. Are we surprised? No. Anyways, day 85, and on to winter we go. And I started to head to town when something blocked the way. What, a Snorlax? 50 bananas? Uh, okay. Uh, so yeah, I bought 50 banana seeds. But on the bright side, they take only two days to grow. I also, of course, had to admire this season's pets. And yeah, you're coming home with me, buddy. Oh, it's so cute! To finish today off, I also caught a frost fin, a heat fin, a holly carp, and a scarf fish. On day 86, I met the penguins of Madagascar. Don't believe me? Yeah. I told you guys. A day later, I gave the snack coon the 50 bananas, and then did more decorating. On day 88, I decided to do more story stuff, and unlock Withergate today. We met Catherine at the Foggy Barrier, where she removed it for us. We then navigated this foggy puzzle, and met Cameron, who ferries souls to the City of Darkness. We didn't get too far, though, because this giant heat viper blocked the path. We met some guards, though, who mentioned that bringing heavy items could defeat it. So I caught 50 sandstone fish, and the following day, returned to the scene of the roadblock. We easily knocked out the heat viper, and then navigated Withergate's sewer system. Although, upon leaving, I was arrested by this person named Cordelia immediately. I guess Withergate doesn't like outsiders very much. Fear not, though, we met someone named Donovan, and Don's the perfect monster disguise. Yep. And in no time at all, I was sawed up with an apartment and a happy loan to repay. Gee, I haven't heard that one before. Anyways, with this brand new area unlocked, I explored for a bit, rode a ferris wheel, and then headed back to Sunhaven. The following day, I brought stuff to the museum, then did more mining on day 91, and then worked on finishing the winter fishing bundle by catching the last required fish, the icicle carp. And after many, many, many fish later, I finally got it. I did more quests on day 93, and more mining a day later. But with this gigantic Withergate debt loop move over my head, I returned to the Monster City for more fishing. I also discovered new barn animals and pets that I needed so badly, you guys. I then bought a tier 2 barn permit, and upgraded my barn, which looked so awesome. But on day 97, I attempted to earn more tickets for my loan, and then spent it all on this cloud lamp, but okay, honestly, tell me you wouldn't do the exact same thing. A day later, I watered my monster crops, did my farm chores, and then did more mining, unlocking the fourth treasure room and a new ore muncher who requested 1,000 stone. Uh, okay, this is gonna be a bit of a challenge. We got this, though. I then finished off the Winter Crops Bundle, and on day 100, finished up quests for Shang and Amanda. This is truly the Safi Busy era, folks. The next couple of days, pretty much days 101 to 104, were very busy. I grew a ton of monster crops, bought some new decor for the apartment, harvested wheat, did more quests, and then picked up one very important item for a very special someone. Yeah, I know it's a bit late in the year, but we are finally going to propose to Lynn and ask her to marry us. And on day 105, I asked her the big question. 
and she said yes. With literally no time to waste, our big wedding day was the following day. Oh my god, this is so exciting! Oh, that looks so cute! Oh my god, I love this. Oh, she looks so pretty! Oh my goodness, I love this. What if I said no? I mean, I'm not going to, but like, that's kind of crazy. And so yeah, on day one, I said I'd marry Lynn, and on day 106, I achieved that goal. I will admit, like, the kissing animation's kinda lame, like, it really isn't a kiss, but it is what it is. And after a day of wedding fun, I tucked him to bed and got this. <gasps> oh my god! Oh my god! Helpful ghost! Oh my goodness! Thank you so much, ghosty! On day 107, I said good morning to my new wife for heading out mining. Then overnight, I was visited by a delivery dragon. Again, I'm not sure if this is one of those rare events overnight sort of thing, but it was pretty cool. I then once again set out mining, but before that, had one very important mission to complete. Obtaining my new seasonal pal, Burry the Polar Cub. I then brought in more museum donations, and then tried to defeat the 15 Prickle Tots for a quest, but then died. Day 110 was again more mining, and the following day, more chores. Which of course brings us to the last day of our year in Sunhaven, and today is the Winter Festival. We had some time to kill though, so I did more mining in Novari, and got this gorgeous fairy cave. I then spent all of my orbs on this sick blue campfire because I couldn't resist. But then, it was time for the festival to start. We began our festival with a delicious feast, and I also bought an Elios gingerbread cookie, made a snowman, and then got my secret gift, three mana tomes. And that, my friends, is my entire year in Sunhaven. As of the editing of this, I'm actually almost done with my second year of Sunhaven, hence all of the extra pets. And while I most likely will not be doing a second year of Sunhaven for the YouTube channel, I may do some streams down the line and will share with you guys my current farm tour right now. And as for my general thoughts on Sunhaven, I honestly love this game so much and think if you guys like Stardew Valley, you will also love Sunhaven. All of the game mechanics, all of the farm animals, everything about it is just so well thought out and unique and I just love the art style too. First playing this game, I was just generally so surprised at how much content the game actually gives you. Like, we have all of Sunhaven, Novari, and Withergate, three fully fleshed out worlds to explore. But anyways, I hope you all enjoyed today's video. I definitely want to do more in-depth 100 days videos for other different games, so feel free to subscribe, I'd love to have you here. But with that being said, I am signing off for now. Thanks to you all who are subscribed, who are members of the channel, I appreciate all of you so very much. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye, friends.